everybody! Welcome to the Jaden Stitches Show! I thought it was time we did something cute and crafty for the kitchen. So the inspiration behind today's project comes from two sources. My love of vintage potholders and the ever-creative mind of my awesome mother-in-law. We were just there for a potluck and she had a bunch of these out on the counter ready for incoming hot casserole dishes. I loved them instantly because they're a double thickness hot pad but made all in one piece so you don't have to make two pieces and stitch it together and I love the efficiency of that concept. What makes it vintage is striping it in two of your favorite colors and adding a little hanger so that when you're done using it you can hang it up on the wall and you're done. I just love it. Anyway, if you're going to make it for aesthetic purposes, you can use whatever kind of yarn you like, so acrylic or wool or cotton or whatever, but if you're going to make it to use like I am and a hot pot may sit on it, I recommend 100% cotton yarn because cotton has a high melt point and it washes really easily. That said, let's grab two of our favorite colors, head on over to the craft table and make ourselves up a hot pad. To make today's pot holders, I'm using worsted weight 100% cotton yarn. I like cotton in the kitchen because it washes well and it has a high melt point. So if you put a hot pot down on this, it's not going to melt or light on fire. <laughs> you need about 30 grams of each color. You need a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, and today's hook is a 5.5 millimeter or an I9. So once you've got all that together, we can get started. Our pot holder is made working in the round. So we're going to begin with a cinch circle. And once you've chained one to secure your circle, you're going to chain two more. So that's three chains coming out of your cinch circle. That is the height of a double crochet. That is the stitch we are using. You want to work eight double crochets into your cinch circle. And that is all you need for row one. Eight double crochets. Once you have eight double crochet worked into your cinch circle, grab your short tail, cinch it shut nice and tight, and we're going to skip over top of our chain three and join to the top of the first real double crochet we made. So while the chain three in this pattern is the right height of a double crochet, we're not actually using it as a working stitch. So skip that chain three and you can join with a slip stitch to the top of the first real double crochet you made. And that gives you a total of eight stitches for the end of round one. Round two, chain three to begin. You have two choices. You can pause and weave your tail in to the back of round one, or you can work over top of it like I do. You will not have a chance to weave in your tail at the end of this project, so you want to consider what you're going to do with it right now. Into the same stitch that you chained three out of, you want to double crochet. And we're doubling up our stitch count, so we're going to double crochet through twice through every single stitch for round two. So you can see that I am going to actually work over top of my short tail. We're going to use my little cheat technique, so we're not working an extra double crochet into this stitch. We're going to pretend that this counts until we get round to the end, and I'll tell you what that cheat is if you're not familiar with it once we get there. So two double crochet in every other stitch and that will take our stitch count from 8 to 16 and I'll see you at the end of row 2. When you get to the end of row 2 you should have 16 stitches in something that looks like this. So this stitch right here that looks like an actual working stitch is what is often referred to as the false stitch. It's technically what we joined and then chained three out of. So we're going to actually use it by working a double crochet into it. This is the little cheat method. It kind of keeps us from having a big gap and a funny looking join. And then you're going to skip over top of the chain three and join to the top of the first double crochet we made. So that doesn't change your stitch count. You still have 16 stitches all the way around. Your chain three will kind of get stuck to the back and you won't have a giant gap there when you close up. Now this might feel a bit wobbly, it might be trying to turn around on you. Don't worry about it, <laughs> that's just sort of the way this goes, but once we get it finished it will lie flat. And that is what I'm going to do for my first stripe. So each of my color stripes is going to be two rows wide, so my first two rows 
our double crochets, that's all we're using throughout, and I only want two rows of white. So I'm going to change colors now by snipping my yarn, fastening off, and I'm going to weave in this tail or work over top of it uh, for row two. And that is row one. So now I'm going to grab my other color. This is pretty turquoise. And in order to join another color, you're going to make a slip knot. Pick up your circle. I'm going to join in the same place that I fastened off, so that little spot right there. Join with a slip stitch. And I'm going to work over both those little short tails in order to weave them in. Chain three to begin, just like you hadn't changed colors at all, you still need to get up to the right height. You're going to double crochet into the same stitch that you joined in, it's pretty easy to see there. And we're still increasing. So this row, row three, has a little two one two one pattern. So for now, that's going to count as two. We're going to double crochet once into the next stitch. And the pattern for the rest of the row is two double crochet into the next stitch. Double crochet into the next stitch. And there goes the last of my little tails. You're going to repeat two, one, two, one, all the way around, and then we're going to do my little cheat when we get back to the end of row three. And I'll see you there. Nearing the end of row three, I finished my last set of two, one. That brings me up to the false stitch. I'm going to work one double crochet into that false stitch. Skip over my chain three and join to my double crochet. And this does not change the stitch count. You should have 24 stitches. And it's going to little, do a little buckling and stuff. That's okay. If it's really driving you crazy, <laughs> you can put it down, flatten it out with the heat of the palm of your hand. But like I say, once we get to the end of this project, it will lie flat. We are still increasing. We're going to chain three to begin row four. Double crochet into the same stitch as joining, and for now this counts as two. Double crochet into each of the next two stitches, and that is the pattern for row four. Double crochet two into the first stitch of the set, so two double crochet. Into the same stitch and then double crochet into the next two stitches for the rest of the set. So two, one, one, two, one, one, all the way around. And at the end of row four, you'll have 32 stitches. Nearing the end of row four, I just finished my last set of two, one, one. I'm gonna work a double crochet into the full stitch, skip over top of my chain three and join to the first double crochet I made in this row. And that is it for my blue stripe. So two rows for each color. I'm going to fasten off and join my white for row five. I'm back to white. I've joined with a slip stitch. I'm going to chain three to begin row five. Same thing, double crochet in the same stitches joining. We are still increasing. So for the sake of now, this counts as two double crochet into the first stitch. And now you're going to work a double crochet into each of the next three. So that is the repeating set for row five. Two double crochet into the first stitch, double crochet into each of the next three. So two, one, 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 two, one, 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 all the way around, and you will have 40 stitches at the end of row five. I'm at the end of row five. I'm going to do my little cheat where I double crochet into the false stitch, skip over the chain three and join to the real double crochet. You should have 40 stitches at the end of row five. And like I say, if it's kind of rolling around on you, just take a moment and flatten it out. 
and we are still increasing. We're going to chain three to begin row six. Double crochet in the same stitch as joining. This counts as two for now until we do our little cheat at the end. And now you're going to double crochet into each of the next four. So two double crochet into the first stitch, double crochet into each of the next four. That is the repeating pattern for row six. And at the end of row six, you'll have 48 stitches. That's my 48th stitch worked into row six. I'm going to double crochet into the false stitch and complete my row by joining to the first real double crochet, so skip the chain three. That is it for white. We are still increasing, so I'm just gonna change my color back to blue. Snip, snip. Join with a slip stitch in the same space as joining and get row seven going. All right, I've changed colors. I'm gonna chain three as though I never did. <laughs> I'm going to double crochet into the first, the same stitch as joining, and for now this counts as two. We're still increasing. So the new pattern for repeating around for row seven is two, double crochet into the first stitch, double crochet into each of the next five. So two double crochet into the first stitch, double crochet into each of the next five. You wanna repeat that all the way around for row seven, and at the end you'll have 56 stitches. We're at the end of row seven. You should have 56 stitches. I'm gonna do my little cheat where I add an extra one into the false stitch and then skip over the chain three, join to the double crochet. I still have 56 stitches. Things are rolling a bit, but that's okay. We've got one more row of increase to do. So we're gonna chain three to begin row eight. Double crochet in the same stitch as joining. This counts as two for now until we do our little cheat at the end. And your new pattern for repeating is two, double crochet into the first stitch, double crochet into each of the next six stitches. And by the end of row eight, you'll have 64 stitches. So two, double crochet into the first stitch, double crochet into each of the next six. And I'll see you at the end. We're at the end of row eight. I'm just gonna work my false stitch. I have 64 stitches. I'm going to change colors now back to white. And we're going to work two rows of double crochet without any increasing or decreasing. So your pot holder is really gonna to start to roll if it hasn't already, but that's perfectly okay because we kind of wanted to do that. So join your other color and we'll start row nine. So row nine and row 10 are exactly the same. Just joining my other color here. You chain three to begin every single row. Don't double crochet in the same stitch as joining, but we are still going to skip over that chain three, but I'll show you what that looks like when we get to the end of this row. And just double crochet in every single stitch all the way around. We're at the end of row nine. You should find that your 64th stitch will be worked into the false stitch. And then you're gonna skip over top of your chain three and join to the top of your first real double crochet. Now you're gonna have some real um, curling at the edges and that's perfectly all right. We're gonna pause our regular pattern for a second here and we're gonna make the little hanger so we're just gonna chain 12. So chain 12 and then slip stitch back into the base. So there's your little hanger you can use to hang up your pot holder when you're not using it. <laughs> And now we're just gonna sort of push that to the front. So sort of push it to your front with your thumb. You're going to chain three to begin row 10. And you're gonna repeat the same thing. So you're just going to start double crocheting in each stitch all the way around. You should find that your 64th stitch is worked into the false stitch, which is this one right here. So if you press down 
get rid of this. It should still be that little false stitch right at the end. Either way, you want 64 stitches. You'll skip over top of your chain 3, join to the top of your real double crochet, and then we will begin decreasing. At the end of row 10, you should find that your 64th stitch got worked into the false stitch, which is at the bottom of that chain 12 we made. Keep your chain 12 to the front of your work, skip over top of that little chain 3 that you began row 10 with, and join with a slip stitch to the top of your first double crochet. And there's our little hanger sticking out the top. I'm going to change colors now, and we will start decreasing for row 11. Alright, here we are in row 11. I'm joining my other color in the same stitch that I joined my previous row with. I'm going to chain 3 to begin, and the pattern is going to change up a little bit now. We are decreasing. We're still going to ignore our chain 3, but we're no longer working any extra stitches into that same space. So chain 3 out of your join, and then immediately address the next two stitches. The beginning of each set for a decreased row begins with a double crochet two together. So you wrap your yarn around your hook and begin a double crochet in the first stitch. Work the first half of it, and then start another double crochet in the next stitch. And I'm just working over my short tails, so just ignore those. You should have three loops on your hook. Wrap, and pull through everything. Now, for the rest of this set, you're going to double crochet into each of the next six stitches. And then I'll show you that double crochet two together all over again. So every set, ignore the chain three, you've got double crochet two together, double crochet into each of the next six, and then begin again. Double crochet two together, so you begin a double crochet, work the first half of it, begin a double crochet in the next stitch, Work the first half of that. You'll have three loops on your hook. Wrap and go through everything. Try not to split your yarn. <laughs> and those two stitches together create one. You can see there's just one loop running across the two of them. Double crochet into each of the next six and repeat. Double crochet two together. Double crochet into each of the next six. At the end of this row, you'll be back down to 56 stitches. We're nearing the end of row 11 you should find that your last stitch of your last set will be worked into the false stitch. So that's why I said things change up a little bit. So we're now using the false stitch as an actual counter, but we're still skipping over top of our chain three, and you're actually going to join to the top of the double crochet two together that you began the row with. So we're still trying to avoid having little gaps, and that is the magic for the decrease. So you should have something now that looks like this. Your pot holder, or your pot rest, will definitely be curling in on itself. That's perfectly fine. We're still going to be flattening it out and stretching it when we're all finished, but it should look like a bit like a frisbee. <laughs> all right, we're decreasing again. We're going to chain three to begin, and we're going to double crochet the first two stitches together of this set. So remember, this one has been used now by the chain three, even though we're not counting it. So address the next two stitches and double crochet them together. So double crochet two together, and then double crochet into each of the next five stitches. And at the end of this row, row 12, you'll be back down to 48 stitches. Your last stitch of the row should be worked in your false stitch. Skip the chain three, join to the top of the double crochet two together. And I'm changing colors again, because that's two rows of blue, so I'm going back to white. And then we'll start row 13. So we're beginning of row 13. We're going to chain three to begin. We're not working into the same stitches joining, so just ignore it. You're going to double crochet your first two stitches together. And I'm working over my short tails, so you just ignore them. <laughs> so that's two double crochet together, and then double crochet into each of the next four. And at the end of row 13, you should be back down to 40 stitches. 
We're at the end of row 13. You should be down to 40 stitches. Your last stitch will have been worked into the false stitch. Skip over your chain 3. Join to the top of that first double crochet 2 together. And now we're into row 14. Chain 3. Find the next two stitches and double crochet two together. And then double crochet into each of the next three stitches. So double crochet two together, double crochet into each of the next three, and at the end of this row you'll be down to 32 stitches. We're at the end of row 14. You should be down to 32 stitches, and your last one will have been worked into the false stitch. Skip your chain 3, and join to the top of your double crochet 2 together. I'm going to change colors because that's my two rows of white back to blue, and we'll be on to row 14, I should say 15, row 15. So I joined my color in the same place that I fastened off. I chain three. I'm going to address the next two stitches. I'm working over my short tail, so just ignore them. And the repeating pattern for this row is double crochet two together. Double crochet into each of the next two. So two double crochet together, double crochet in each of the next two. And at the end of this row, you'll be back down to 24 stitches. We're at the end of row 15. We're down to 24 stitches. You're going to skip your chain 3, join to the top of that double crochet 2 together that you began the row with. And here we go again. Row 16, chain 3 to begin. Ignore it. Find the next two stitches, double crochet them together, and double crochet into the next stitch. So your pattern around is double crochet two stitches together, double crochet into the next stitch, and repeat. Double crochet two together, double crochet into the next stitch, and at the end of this row you'll be down to 16 stitches. I'm down to 16 stitches. We should have something that looks kind of like this, like a deflated balloon right now. <laughs> That's my last row of blue. I'm going to change colors back to white. So one more color change for me, and we're going to work our last two rows, and we'll be finished. Row 17. We are still decreasing. After I join my yarn and chain three, I'm going to find the next two stitches. I'm working over my short tails, so just ignore them. You're going to double crochet two stitches together all the way around for row 17. And at the end of row 17, you'll be down to eight stitches. Your work's getting a little tight. It's probably a little heavy. So take your time. <laughs> There's no rush here. You're double crocheting two stitches together all the way around. So your last double crochet two together should have been made using the full stitch. You're going to skip over top of your chain three, join to the top of your first double crochet two together, and we are almost done. For our last row, we are only going to use single crochet. So we're going to chain one, we're going to single crochet in the same stitches joining, and you're going to single crochet in each real stitch all the way around. So you should still have eight, and it's a bit tight, so don't worry about it. Just take your time. Single crochet in each stitch. All right, you should have eight single crochets for your last row. You can join with a slip stitch to the first one. Snip your yarn, leave yourself a little bit of tail, because we're going to fasten off here, and we're going to just cinch up this little opening with our yarn needle. So thread up the tail, and then you can just 
weave your yarn needle in and out through all of those stitches. So around the posts of all the stitches in your last row. And it'll cinch shut for you. There you go. You don't have to pull too tightly. And then you can weave your tail in and around some of the other stitches and that will help lock it into place and if it still doesn't feel terribly secure you can give it a little knot and weave in a little more and then just trim any excess. So just weave in the rest of that tail and that is it for our little hot pad. Alright, I wove in my tail. I went around back and forth a couple times through some of those stitches. I trimmed off the excess. Now you can just stretch out your little hot pad. If you feel that it's still a bit bouncy, don't worry because the first couple times you use it, it will flatten itself right out. But if you're only using this for decor, then you can steam block it or give it a quick hand wash, get it damp with some water, and then just lay it flat to dry. But if you stretch it out and use your hands, the heat of your hands should flatten it out. <laughs> and you now have a very vintage looking pot holder. And there you go, a cute little pot holder to add to your collection and it's super useful too. <laughs> if you like pot holders and hot pads, we have a couple of other nifty little patterns available for free over on our website. We'll put the link in the description box down below. When you get to our website, just look for the pattern workshop page and you'll find them both there. And that's it for this week, everybody. Thanks so much for tuning in and making a pot holder with us today on the Jade and Stitches show. Until next time, stay safe, stay crafty, and have an awesome week. Bye.